thank you all for uh, coming. Um, it's nice to see this packed, crowded room. Uh, we have four very exciting abstracts to, to share with you. Um, I'll just get right to it. Uh, the first speaker is Dr. Jose Bazelga, who's the physician in chief at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. It's an abstract on a new uh, uh, antibody drug conjugate in breast cancer. Just a quick reminder to the speakers to pull the microphone forward. It's a small room, but it's being So thank you very much, Charles, and, 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 and thank you, everybody, for, for being here. So uh, we're going to present the, the biomarker data on the EMILIA uh, study that, as you know, was a phase three study that uh, compared uh, TDM1 uh, with lapatinib and capsitabine in, in patients with metastatic breast cancer. Now, the trial design, uh, we'll show in a minute. Uh, just before we go into that, yes, the mechanism of action of TDM1 is different from the classical HER2 therapies. This is uh, trastuzumab. And bound to it, there is a very uh, potent toxin called uh, entancin. And the concept is that trastuzumab TDM1 binds to HER2. The, 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 the whole thing gets internalized, and then it gets released into the cell. And uh, entancin is a very potent, very potent cytotoxic. It does inhibit uh, macrotubule uh, polymerization. The side design you're familiar with, because that the approval of TDM1 by the FDA just a few weeks ago. Uh, patients in... Um, Second line uh, metastatic disease, TDM1 versus the approved combination of lapatinib and capsitabine. And the study um, was positive. It showed an improvement in progression-free survival based on independent assessment that was quite significant, has a ratio of 0.65. And it also showed an improvement in survival uh, that uh, you are familiar with. What we did as part of the study is that we collected uh, tumor blocks in, in, in a large number of patients, and we had a number of biomarkers that we had incorporated that we thought were important at the time of the study design to see if they could predict uh, benefit from a, one of the study arms. So basically what we were looking at was at members of the HER2 family, that's the GF receptor, HER2 and HER3. We were looking at um, mRNA in the tumor, uh, by RT-PCR, and also we were looking at P10 uh, uh, expression and then at P uh, mutations, and you have here the description. So the first finding is looking at HER2. What we did is that we divided the tumor between, based on the median of HER2 expression. Now, these are all HER2-positive tumors. Just be aware that these are all HER2 overexpressors. But within that family uh, of HER2 overexpressors, we separated the very high with the, uh, with the lower end, if you wish. And we have done this analysis by multiple means, by quartiles, by median, etc. And the point is that the more HER2 you have, even within the HER2 or expressor, the greater benefit you have in terms of progression-free survival, both to lapatinib and capsatibine and to TDM1. And that's what's being shown here. If we now look at survival, uh, those patients that had higher HER2 derived even greater survival benefit from TDM1, and uh, you see that the time here is quite, is quite remarkable. We're talking about 34 months of survival in patients that were in second-line um, therapy. That's, that's remarkable, and look at the hazard ratio is 0.53. The other thing, of course, is the PI3 kinase mutation. We had known from papers that we had published in our lab and others, that PF3 kinase mutations that are downstream from HER2, they induce resistance to HER2 uh, therapies that inhibit HER2 signaling. And uh, that's exactly what we saw here. So if you look at the lapatinib arm, these are the red colors. Those that harbor the mutation, which are the solid lines, uh, these patients do worse in terms of progression of survival. This does not happen with TDM1. And you can see the lines are totally overlapping. And if we look at survival, the same principle applies. Difference with uh, lapatinib, no difference at all with uh, TDM1. So I think that's important, and uh, that's the way uh, PI3 kinase sits in the system. So if you have a PI3 kinase mutation, uh, the tumor is insensitive, if you wish, to agents that hit HER2. But in the case of TDM1, since uh, uh, an important mechanism of action is the release of etanzim, 
uh, basically, uh, 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 TDM1 is PI3 kinase neutral in this uh, regard. And that's my final slide. Thank you.